Hey guys, welcome to a new video. In this video here, we're going to take a look at the real-time detection transformer. So from Autolytics, we actually have the YOLO V8, YOLO V5 model. Those are convolutional-based update detection models. But in this video here, we're going to take a look at a transformer-based update detection model running in real time. So the main problem with transformer models is that they tend to be like way slower compared to convolutional networks. But now we actually have a model being able to run in real time, and we're going to see that at the end. So let's not just jump straight into the Autolytics documentation. If we go inside the Models tab, we can see all the models available in the Autolytics framework and library. We can see YOLO v3 all the way up to YOLO v9, Segment Anything, Mobile SAM, Fast SAM, YOLO NAS, Real Time Detection Transformer, and also the YOLO World for open vocabulary update detection. But this is actually like from Baidu. We have a vision transformer based real time object detection model now, where all the other ones here are actually like based on convolutional layers. So this model here is actually like based on the VIT model, so the vision transformer, where we actually like just take our images, divide it into patches, and then we take the concepts behind like last language models and how we use it in NLP task, where we basically just have a string, then we're going to take a patches of images, have one long sequence of our patches, then we can throw it into the model, it learns what to pay attention to, what to actually like extract from it. Then we can have our decoder and our head on top of that to be able to extract information and also localize our object where they are in the image. So this is a high level overview over our real-time detection transformer and you can see the model architecture here you can get an overview you can read through it yourself so here are the key features we have an efficient hybrid encoder we have intersection over union aware query selection so basically just what queries and like how we choose the different queries when we're doing our attention on multi-head attention we have an adaptable inference speed here as well which acts like makes it be able to run in real time. We have pre-trained models that regular out of the hood. We can use them with the Autolytics frameworks with the Autolytics Python API. So we have the real-time detection transformer large model, which has 58% average position on the Cogo dataset. And we also have an extra large model here, which has slightly better average position on the Cocoa data set. So if you compare this, this is actually like really good results compared to just the traditional convolutional based networks, but it still lacks a bit on the speed. But again, Everything comes down to trade-off between accuracy and speed, so definitely test it out in your own applications and projects. Here we get some music examples, which is basically just showing how we set it up. It is using the exact same structure as the YOLO V8 models. Right now, instead of importing YOLO, we just import RTDETR, and then we can create an instance of that model. We just specify the large or the extra large. It's going to download the model automatically. We can get info about our model here if you want to have that. We can train it, or we can do inference directly on our model instance class. Here we can see the support task and also the mode, so we can do inference, validation, training, and also export the model to use in our own applications and projects. So right now, let's jump into a Python script, let's see the results, let's see how we can run it, and let's see how fast this real-time detection transformer is. So right now we jumped into a custom Python script. Let's see how we can use this model. We import it, we create an instance of it. Right now we're just going to use the large model. We get the info and now we can do inference. We can just specify the source. So let's start with a video file. So this is the video file that we're going to process. Just an intersection here with a bunch of cars driving around. So then here we can also see the performance with this model on smaller objects. And we're also going to see the speed. In the arguments, we specified that we want to show the results while we're processing it. And we also want to save it into a video file so we can go back and take a look at it afterwards. So now we're going to open a new terminal. We will set up a command prompt. There we go. We're inside our anaconda. We run Python rtdtr.py. It's going to extract the model here to start with. So first of all, if you're running this for the first time, it will do everything for you. Download the model and then it's going to run the inference. So right now we can see how to extract the results. We can now see that it's doing detection. So it's detecting a lot of trucks here where it is acting like a car, but we can see that it detects all of the cars up here at the top, which is relatively small objects. We can see that it's acting like a bit slower compared to if we're just running like traditional YOLO 8 models. I'm running this on a 4090. If we go outside in here, again to the terminal, we can see the speed. So right now it is around like 38, 40 milliseconds act like doing inference. Now we can see that it becomes a bit slower. So the more cars and so on, it will actually like become slower um, over time. But let's just scroll up through here. Again, I'll probably say it's around 40, 45 milliseconds um, inference, which is about like 20 frames per second. So it is able to run in real time. But again, we don't get the speed as we do with the YOLO V8 models, which is based on the convolutional uh, layers. So let's now go in and test it on another video. We can see that we have this um, back or like luggage belt, which is running at an airport. And we have all these suitcases here uh, getting ready for pickup. 
So right now, let's just try to throw this model here through it. I'm just going to specify the path directly to that. Again, you can use your webcam, you can use like video files, images, individual images, and so on. And you can just have a for loop running through that. So let's just run the program here again, and let's try to see how it does on this back video with our suitcases. So right now we can see that it actually like runs fairly fast. It, we get around like 30 milliseconds um, inference time. So that's around 30 frames per second. Again, I'm running this on a 4090, so it's on the higher end. But again, if you're using like a smaller GPU and so on, you'll still be able to get like 15, 20 frames per second, which is pretty awesome compared to that this is actually like running with a VIT model or a vision transformer based model. So right now we have tested out the large model, which let's just test out the extra large model as well. So right now we can see that we're running the extra large model. We can see that we get around like 45 to 50 milliseconds inference time. So we went from around 40 to around 50 if we just round it up. So it's not like it is way slower if we're using the XBLOT model compared to the large model. So it really depends on your use case and also the project that you're going to use it in. So if we're comparing this to a ULV8 model, right now we're running around 50 milliseconds. If we need to have comparable performance with a ULV8 model, we can probably get away with a medium model, which will be running at around 20 milliseconds per frame, again, depending on your GPU. So the convolutional based optimization models is still significantly faster, but we still get some good performance with the transformer based ones. But again, we have to go down on the inference speed it will always be a trade-off between accuracy and speed. So it really depends on your own applications and projects. Test it out on your own application and projects. I hope you have learned a ton this video here and gotten some insights into that now the transformer models also starting to come into the optic detection world and maybe it will take over the convolutional based neural networks in the future. Test it out in your own application and projects and then I'll just see you guys in the next video. Until then, happy learning.